Hello everybody and welcome to this, the TTL F1 Season 15 Team Announcements. The moment you've all been waiting for. You've seen the cup, you've seen how that ends. This is recorded before the cup so we have no idea what happens. But well done, insert name here. Um, of course joining me for this driver announcement and team announcement is of course Mr Andy Campbell. Andy, how are you tonight and are you looking forward to this? Very well, thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome along to uh, something a little bit different, something that we've not streamed for once, uh, is the driver announcement and team announcement for season 15. Really looking forward to this, we've just seen obviously a cracking season 14, which went right down to the final race between Lyronics and Spike. We have just seen the insert name here winning the cup event previous to this and uh, you know really looking forward to seeing who's going to be where for the new season because obviously if it's anything like last season we're in for a treat yeah absolutely um obviously we'll go through the end of season awards just to begin with and andy there's uh, there's quite a few things to go through first of all um <laughs> obviously we have, but basically, we're just keeping everyone on tent hooks. That's basically what we're doing right now. So, let's have pretty a look. much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. So, let's have a look at some of these uh, championships. Well, obviously, the season 15 champion was Lyronics. He had a pretty good run, two wins and nine podiums. Andy, that's uh, not a bad way to round off the season at all. Mm. No, definitely not. And if that's what he's done for season 15, then Jesus, because we've not even started it yet. Yeah, that was his stats, obviously, for season 14. I just like to wind you up and make you feel like silly. Um, really, really, really impressive, though. I think he made points finishes, him and Spike, in every single race as well, all 11 races, too. So really, really consistent performance. Definitely uh, a worthy champion. And um, it will be interesting to see how he now goes about defending that championship moving into season 15. Can he make it back to back? Will we see Spike finally take his second championship? Will someone else come to the forefront instead? Definitely will be very interesting to see indeed, but it was a very consistent season and that was the basis of Lyronic's season, along with these two early victories that he got in the first two rounds. And he becomes the first non-British driver to win TTL F1 in its entire history. So uh, big, big stat for Lyronics there. The first, not only the first German to win, but the first non-British driver. So that's a bit of piece of history for TTL F1. So he gets himself onto the honours list. He joins Mystery Man, Collie, Lambo, Spike, and Jack all on one uh, TTL F1 championship. So he's in good company. Absolutely so. I mean, you've got some brilliant names in there from the history of TTL over the years. Um, can he add to that? Can he take himself up to, to two championships, joining the like of, I believe, Liam Houswick's got two championships tractor. Uh, Crazy Legs, I think, is also a two-time champion as well, which is something until we were prepping for this, I actually had no idea of <laughs> at all. So, sorry, Crazy Legs, I didn't even notice that side of things. But it's definitely very, very good company. It, it'll be interesting, as I, as I say, to see how he defends that championship. He's now he's no longer the hunter. He is now the hunted. He is the one with the number one technically on that car. He is now the one with that target on his back. Everybody is gunning for the German. And let's have a look at this screen here for the season review. So driver of the season was Lyronics. Most wins, Spike and Jack tied on three. Most pole positions was Jack on four. Most podiums, as we said before, Lyronics on nine. Most fastest laps was Jack and Recon, both on three. Most podium finishes, Spike and Lyronics finishing on the podium in every single race this season. And most DNFs, the one you don't want, is Crazy, crazy Legs on eight. So a little bit of a season review there. And to be honest with you, I think this, this screen entirely sums up the season for everybody on that list. We've seen Recon set some fantastic laps in qualifying, not quite converting them to uh, maybe the results he won. I believe he had one race win in the season. Correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, or I might be just looking at the wrong stat sheet. But we've also had, you know, Spike and Lyronics, for example, podiums in every single race this season. It just showed you how dominant they were this season. And it also gave us a cracking battle towards the end of it. 
It did, absolutely. We went down to the final race um, at Abu Dhabi. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, Recon there. It, when you look at his season, there was two victories. He took victory in Suzuka, and he took victory in the season finale there in Abu Dhabi. He only finished three other races. He had two DNFs and another four did not start, as he had a bit of a stop-start season. But when he was racing, as you say, fastest laps in there, the joint top uh, fastest laps, with three there alongside of Jack and it shows you that Dutchman does have some good pace there. He did get caught out in a few unfortunate incidents, wrong place, wrong time. He could be someone to keep an eye on into this new season if he can keep his nose out of trouble. But um, it does show, I mean, the best one for me is 1100% um, points finishes for Spike and Lyronix. It's just a phenomenal consistency in my opinion. And uh, with the Season 14 review out of the way, well, before that, we've also got the Constructors' Champions, which were Mercedes. So a big congratulations to them. They both, they had both Jack and Spike scoring consistent points for them. And I think deserving Constructors' Champions. No one could catch them this season. No, definitely not. I mean, obviously, Jack never quite done the full season uh, in Season 14. But yeah, when he was there, he's on the list there for Apollo's fastest lap, stuff like that. He was quick. Uh, it would be, as I say, a number of times during the streams, it would be really interesting to see what the championship battle could have been like if he had been there every week. So we could have ended up with a three-way scrap all the way to the end of the season. Hopefully, he can join us for every race into season 15 because that could make Thursday nights extremely exciting indeed. And it'll be interesting to see, though, will he still be in the Mercedes? Will he be moved? That's what we don't know quite yet. Well, let's have a look now at uh, what we've all been waiting for. It is now the Season 15 driver lineup, and we start with the defending Constructors' Champions with Mercedes. So their first driver, they've announced the signing, they have done it, of Lyronix. Lyronix leading the line with Mercedes. Obviously, he's a champion. He's a two-time race winner, uh, driver for TTG Esports, and also the captain as well of TTG Esports. So he'll be spearheading what should be a chance for Mercedes to defend this title. And I have to say, Andy, what a signing. That's a heck of a signing there from the Brackley team, defending the Constructors' Champions, going out of their way to get the defending Drivers' Champion into the Silver Arrows. That's a very, very strong sign in there. And it does show you as well, we've always known Lyronix has been pretty quick. Um, you know, we've seen that. But this, this since this new season, with Season 14 on the new 2019 game, he's just taken his performances to another level. He's taken up to that championship and it's now got him, as well as being the defending champion. He is the eSports, TTG eSports captain as well because of everything and his performances off the track, which a lot of people don't see. He's very diplomatic, very approachable as well, and that's a very strong signing for Mercedes. And obviously we, we need a teammate for the Mercedes team, and so Mercedes have announced that they are retaining one of their drivers, and it's going to be Spike. Spike is being retained by Mercedes, which means... Jack has moved from Mercedes. We'll find out uh, where, as it as it turns out. But yeah, Spike, uh, a champion in TTL, three-time constructors champion, including season 14, two times Challenge Cup winner. Uh, when we're recording this, of course, uh, TTG Esports driver and also a veteran TTL F1 driver. He's one of the most experienced drivers in the field. And I've said this over streams in the past. How he's only got one championship is. Well, borderline criminal, Andy, but yeah, a great and a strong lineup for Mercedes to defend their title. That's an extremely lot strong lineup there for Mercedes. Keeping probably, in, in terms of overall honours, one of the most decorated TTL uh, drivers we've ever had. Um, but as you say, just the one driver's championship is a bit criminal for a driver of his talent. We know how good he is at saving the tyres. We know how explosively quick he can be when required. And obviously, he, he's, he's been one of the cornerstones of the league for many, many a year. And it's no surprise to see Mercedes sticking with him. But it wouldn't have surprised me if they'd stuck to Jack either. Maybe, just maybe, the fact that Jack couldn't commit to the full season last year, it just maybe took his stock out a little bit for Mercedes in terms of retaining him over Spike. That's the only thing I can think of there, because either way, it would have been a strong lineup with the defending champion as well. It's a harsh decision, but someone has to make it, and the Brackley team have gone with Lyronix and Spike 
for their lineup. We come next to Red Bull. Now, Red Bull, uh, their first driver is it is Jack. So he may have lost his seat with Mercedes. He now joins the Red Bull team. Red Bull finished fourth place in the Constructors' Championship last season, so they'll be looking for more consistent points. And where else are you going to find it across this league than with Jack? He is a champion. He's a four times Constructors' Champion, and he's also a member of the TCG Esports team. Uh, a great signing for Red Bull, and it shows that signing of intent. Absolutely. So season 14 champion and a you know, very consistent driver. You don't get four times constructors champion without being consistent. Uh, Brackley's loss, Mercedes loss by having to pick two drivers is Red Bull's gain. And it'll be really interesting to see just how much that bull bucks with Jack at the wheel because I think that could be a very strong sign and, and that is a real measure of intent from Red Bull. Uh, just to correct you there, Andy, he's the season 13 champion. We just had season 14, Oops. remember? Lyronics See, you get even I make mistakes as well. There ah, you go. Mistake, <laughs> mistakes are always there. They're always out, out to collect. Uh, we also have uh, in the other Red Bull, in the uh, second car, is the Gort. Now, one-time race winner and a veteran TTL F1 driver. He's coming back. And, you know, Red Bull have made, a, I think they've made a solid team here. Obviously, they'll be having Jack spearheading the attack, but don't ever underestimate the Gort. He can always pull out a result when no one else is expecting it. Definitely so. He is definitely a, a driver who can get the results. He'll be consistently up there in the points as well. Seen some really good results from him uh, last season. He was in the Renault uh, last season um, and they finished up. He was only ninth place in the championship. He had quite a few DNS, but I remember a few of them being due to unluckiness. But if you go back to Germany, he uh, then had a run of five points finishes in a row from Germany up to USA. So he can be very consistent in his day, just like Spike. He is a veteran. He's someone that's been around TTL uh, for a while now. Uh, it's definitely a strong uh, driver lineup for Red Bull as well. But without it trying to be any sort of disrespectful towards anyone, you would expect that it'll be Jack that will probably be leading that lineup there in the sort of Max Verstappen esque role, you could say, if you want to relay it to real life. But they've got a very strong additional driver in there as well. Yeah, and what this means is Red Bull have dropped both drivers, so there's no room for Warren and there's no room for Saunders, although they both were sort of signings towards the end of the season, so it was going to be tough for them to keep their seats, but they haven't, well, Red Bull think they haven't done enough and they've gone with what they think is the strongest lineup. Uh, they've signed the Gort from Haas, uh, and obviously it, it's close running, but sometimes in Formula 1 you have to be a bit ruthless as a team leader. Definitely so, and it's um, mirror in real life as well, Helmut Marko wielding the axe here, just whenever you think you're safe, Dr. Marko comes showing up with his trusty axe and gets rid of them, so completely new lineup for Red Bull. I don't think it'll be the only lineup though that's completely changed, there will be a couple of drivers I think stay, be interesting to see who is the rest of the way down, but strong lineup from Red Bull, new beginnings, new season, could be the one for them, you never know. Now we move on next to Ferrari. Now Ferrari really did have a quiet season. Fifth place, 95 points. That's not somewhere you'd expect the Ferraris to be. Um, and their first signing, again, is a signing of intent. They have gone out of their way to sign Recon. Uh, a TTL F1 and F2 race winner. He won the championship in F2, earned his right and seat in F1, driving for, I believe it was Haas last season. Yes, so Haas have lost both their drivers this season it's unlucky for them but yeah recon uh, for the Netherlands also an F2 constructors champion TTG esports driver again Ferrari with their first driver real intent there we've seen recon can put in a qualifying lap it's just getting the car higher up the order when the checkered flag gets flown out Definitely so. Quick driver as Recon, we just mentioned that in the introduction part before we started going through uh, the driver lineups. And if you can keep his nose clean, can make sure he qualifies further up the grid sometimes when he's not quite on the pace. That's what's caught him out a few times. Just being in that midfield pack, losing a, a bit of front wing or getting caught up in someone else's incident or just being wrong place, wrong time. If he can avoid that, that's a very strong sign. And I think for Ferrari, they're wanting to obviously move up the order. They had a pretty quiet season season last year but they were consistently getting points with their two drivers which were Sean and Mays. It'll be interesting to see which one of the two have they dropped because obviously by bringing the Dutchman in one of them has to go. 
Yeah, one of them has to go, but who is it? Well, we reveal our second driver for Ferrari, and it is, well, they've retained Sean. So, Sean then, TTL F1, best finish of third place. He's also the Academy Esports driver, Academy captain as well, and also a veteran TTL driver. Best finish of third, and seems to have that finds himself in a race of his own mantra. Um, obviously, he had a quiet season. It ramped up towards the end. He started to get some strong points finishes, and Ferrari say that's enough to keep him on the team. Definitely so. I mean, it's not to take anything away and trying to put anything down on, on Maze, but Sean's performances, he got 74 points during the season, um, was most of the points, but he was always, as we say, in a race of his own, mainly around about fourth or fifth place on most occasions, just couldn't quite make his way into the podium positions last season, but it's a strong lineup, and for me as well, Sean's had quite a bit of an improvement as well um, over the last few months. He also races in the Project Cars League that we do as well, and he just recently took a, a race victory and a couple of podiums in recent weeks as well so his race craft is really coming along across both both games and it's really starting to put itself into the F1 game as well now so now what he needs to do is he needs to take that uh, additional experience and you know just go with it he needs to run with this he needs to take this opportunity we all know that the Scuderia is very cutthroat they expect nothing but the best they can allow for a little bit of a slump but they do not want to go back to the early 90s and all of that when they could not buy a championship for love nor money and it is up to Sean now to try and take that and run with it and especially with Recon joining he's got a strong teammate who we know is quick and is a race winner he needs to try and get the upper hand on the Dutchman early in what could be a very interesting inter-team battle yeah, we move on now to Toro Rosso. Now, Toro Rosso, well, they finished ninth place in the Constructors' Championship last season, and they had a little bit of a, a, a rut where they kept having to have reserve drivers. They kept having, they, they didn't really have permanent drivers until the, maybe the last quarter of the season, and even then, they did struggle. They, they really have gone for a signing of intent. Some people see them as the Red Bull feeder team. I think Toro Rosso are showing a sign of intent for season 15. They want to be a team of their own. Their first signing is Tror. Now, Tror is one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. He's also a constructors champion in TTL F1. He's an esports academy driver um, for someone who's been in TTL for so, so long. Um, obviously, he's very consistent as well. And I think that's what Toro Rosso are going for this season. They want consistent points. And I think Tror is one of the people who could do that for them. Definitely so. I mean, he joined last season um, after the first three races, joining in at round four in Canada. And from then to the end of the season, he only had one DNF, which was in Singapore. And he made the points in every other race. In fact, when he did finish, he was either fourth, fifth or sixth. So not quite able to get on the podium, a bit similar to what Sean had, but consistently in the points. And that's what Toro were also are also looking for there. That's a good sign and they're taking the German on. And it'll be interesting to see how he runs with that. And it'll also be interesting to see who his teammate is. Because obviously Toro were also last season, he had Yuzi and he had Graham in the cars. And um, have they kept any of those two on? Because there was a little bit... A little bit of inconsistency from them. Usually we seem to get in a bit of trouble from time to time during the races as well. And we, as we just mentioned with Red Bull, they're known for wielding the axe and what they feel is an underperforming driver. Have they done the same here? Have they got rid of both drivers or have they kept one of them? Well, it seems like here when Troll sat down with Toro Rosso uh, to say, you know what, if you're signing me from McLaren, you have to sign my teammate. Looks like that negotiation went through because Troll's teammate for the season at Toro Rosso is Lighty. So Toro Rosso have completely taken the lineup from McLaren away from them. Uh, Lighty, who is a one-time pole sitter in TTL F1, his best result in a race is third place. Best championship position, fifth place for Lighty. And I think they'll have seen Troll's and Lighty's performance and thought, you know what, go away from McLaren and now come to the team of Toro Rosso with maybe a shot at getting into Red Bull in future seasons. Definitely so, and uh, Lighty, another uh, example of a consistent driver for Toro Rosso. The, the Germans are coming, as they say, and uh, when you look through Lighty's performance last season, again, very consistent in the points, all but one, uh, two races, one that he DNF'd in, which was Japan. He was 12th place in Canada after a few incidents during that, that race, but he had third place in Singapore, which is probably one of the hardest races of the year as well, and made some solid points 
throughout the season. Just needs to find a little bit of extra consistency in my opinion. That's not a dig or a light slight in any way. It just seems to get himself... I think he sometimes gets in a wee bit of a situation where something goes wrong and I think he just lets his head drop sometimes just then the, the mistakes start to happen. Moving on then to McLaren, who obviously have had both drivers taken away from them. They need to look for a new lineup, a new solution. They've obviously seen the Red Bull retained list and seen Warren on the free agency list, and that's who they've signed. Three podiums in, well, he started halfway through the season, maybe even later than that, uh, and he comes as a first full new season driver and a TTG Esports Academy driver. He was really relenting his luck towards the last part of the season, but obviously McLaren have seen enough in him and enough potential to say, look, we're giving you the driver, and also we're giving you the first driver role. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, he joined up uh, for the Austrian Grand Prix, and if you remember rightly, he nearly won it until he made a, a small error towards the end of the race. So he took second place here. He took second place in Germany, followed that up with a third place in Spa and a sixth place in Singapore with three DNS towards the end of the season where he was relenting his luck, as you just mentioned there. And um, again, just... Yeah, you could see because he was doing the chat as well during the streams, and you could tell he was getting frustrated. He knows he can do better than that as well. Uh, if he can just keep again, a bit like light even, just keep his head from dropping in those moments, uh, is a very, very strong signing from McLaren, and uh, definitely one to watch out for first full season. And he came in like an absolute batter of hell. So if he can pick up that kind of performance again at the start of the season, he's going to be one to keep an eye on for sure. But who's his teammate? Who is his teammate? Well, let's find out. Well, both Haas drivers are gone because Crazy Legs is the second driver in the McLaren. Two-time TTL F1 champion, two-time Constructors champion, uh, TTG Esports Academy driver and a veteran around TTL F1 in itself. I mean, there's a lot of experience there, but I think they might be slightly concerned about the record that Crazy Legs holds for last season. Most DNS, 8 out of 11 Grand Prix, he did not finish. So they've obviously gone with the experience rather than, you know, the, the, the form. As they say, form is temporary, class is permanent, and that's what McLaren have gone for. Absolutely. So, I mean, when you look at Crazy Legs' uh, record for last season, as you mentioned, there's 8 DNFs out of 11 races. One race he did not start, which was Singapore, and the other two races that he did complete, it was a 6th place in China and a 14th place in Austria. So that is definitely McLaren looking to the experience. They're hoping that after what is what you, is basically not a great season, and I think even Crazy Legs himself will confirm that. They're hoping that he can use that um, experience of being a veteran driver to put the bounce back ability, as they say, and take the team forward, moving forward from there, and try and get himself also back up into some race winning potential as well, because two-time champion, he's done it before, class is permanent, as you say, but the form, you'd hope, is definitely temporary. Well, obviously McLaren are hoping to improve. Yes, they got third place in the Constructors last season, but compared to Mercedes, McLaren scored 122 points, Mercedes 325. They were down 203 points, so they've made two signings here in the hopes that that deficit can come way, way down. Moving on then to Renault. Now, Renault finished seventh last season, but they scored 74 points. They weren't too far away from Haas ahead of them. However, They've gone for uh, two drivers here who they hope will take them back to at least uh, to a better position than last time out. I think they'll be aiming much higher than seventh place. The first driver then they've gone for is they've made a signing from Racing Point. It is Navy. They've gone with him as their first driver. He's won the TTL F1 Classic Cup once. He's also a race winner in TTL F2. He's won the Challenge and the Classic Cup in TTL F2 as well. And he's also a TTG Esports Academy driver. Lots of success there for Navy. So, you know... Renault have said, look, you're, you're clearly a, a winning driver. You can win Classic Cups. You can win Challenge Cups. Let's see if we can bring that success with us. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, plenty of victories there in the Cup events. It just seems to be pulling together a string of results like you need to be able to take a full season Warfare Championship. It just seems to elude uh, Navy at the moment. Some decent results last season, but when you look at it, it only had four finishes, a third place in Australia, fourth place in Canada, 
6th place in America and 5th place in the season finale at Abu Dhabi. He missed 6 races, he DNF'd in one other race. So, you know, when he does get the chance there, he is finishing strongly and he just needs to carry that on and be around for a full season, not let anything get in the way. Renault have got a possibility of a very strong driver there because we have seen him be extremely quick on occasions as well. Um, and I believe he also took two fastest laps last year as well in season 14. So that's definitely something that he has in his arsenal. And that could be a very um, canny signing, in my opinion, from Renault, who had quite a few number, number of driver changes last season as well. There's quite a few changes to their lineup throughout the year. So they'll be hoping for a little bit more of a consistent lineup with their two drivers this year. And. Well, with their second driver, uh, they've gone for, they've seen Ferrari uh, release Maze and they've gone in and signed him straight up. Uh, TTL F1 race winner, one time. He's a three-time TTL F2 race winner. Classic Cup winners in both F1 and F2 and also an eSports Academy driver for TTG. And obviously he brings that wealth of experience with him. He's been here from the very start, so he knows how to drive one of these cars and I think it's a good signing for Renault. Very good sign, and we always know that Mays is likely to get the car to the end of the race in some way, shape, or form. And usually, to you know, last season was towards the uh, tail end of the points, but it was meaning that he was picking up points on a consistent basis. Very consistent driver, probably the longest running driver, obviously, for uh, reasons that most people will be fully aware of. Uh, he has a race victory under his belt, cut the race victories in F2 as well, cut the cup victories too. Definitely a solid sign, and, and again, someone that. Um, I've had obviously the, the, the fortune of, of speaking to racing, you know, uh, in public lobbies or private lobbies that we're having testing in, etc. And he's, you know, he's getting better all the time. He's always improving. And um, you know, if you can just string a few more uh, consistencies together, a few better, higher results, so to speak, I'm sure he wants to do that himself. That could be a very canny sign in his well for him. It's a very good lineup there for them as they look to have a much more consistent season compared to last year. Moving on then to Alfa Romeo, who finished bottom of the Constructors last season. Not a great season for them at all. Their first driver, though, they've gone for Alan Kay. So they're saying to him, you can lead the line. His best finishing position in TTL F1 is fifth place. He's also an eSports Academy driver for TTG and a veteran of these parts as well. They've gone for the experience of Alan Kay. And obviously, with him changing over to no assists, I think in each race, he's just getting quicker. Again, he's one of those drivers who will get the car to the end of the race, no matter what, as you said, uh, as we've seen with uh, Mays and Alan Kay over the years, that they're the two drivers that really can do that. So I think, as well as that, I think Alfa Romeo is saying, look, you're getting better and better. Have another go at it. Definitely so. And, you know, Alan's someone that I've, I'm actually very good friends with, I would say, as well, along with the likes of yourself and Mays, um, within the, the TTG community. And, um, you know, he's also another driver like Sean that's part of the Project's Cars League that I'm in. And his consistency in racecraft and that is improving week on week on week. He has moved to the no assists in F1. He's been very, you know, we've been very public about it because it's a hard thing to do. Me and you both know just how hard it is to try and turn those assists off when you want to be quick. It's not the easiest thing to do, and especially when you're doing these 50% races in a very public setting, your live stream. And so that's, that to me, that's a confidence boost for the Irishman. The Alpha have retained them. And despite, you know, with all of that, and when you look at it, as you say, apart he had two DNFs early in the season, but apart from that, he's finished every other race, and even though there's been a few non-points finishes at certain races, as you say, he always brings the car to the end, and that is something that you need in a league race, because there's always going to be retirements at points, and there's always the possibility of picking up a few championship points at the end, so that's a good, that's a good sign, and I think, there for Alfa Romeo, retaining Alan Kay, and I like that one. Second driver then, and Alfa Romeo have decided to retain their driver lineup for last season because their second driver is Charlie HH. He is a point scorer in TTLF1 with a best finishing position of sixth place. Now, what do you think of that, Andy? Alfa Romeo keeping their driver lineup exactly the same. So Alfa deciding to go for that pure consistency, then not changing the first team, not to change a single driver. 
in their lineup. Charlie, I would say, has had a bit of a, a tricky season 14. Uh, we know he can be quicker than what he did last season. I wonder if he's maybe just struggled a little bit with a transition into the new 2019 um, edition of the game. Um, but again, that should be a confidence booster to Charlie. Um, again, he's actually another one who's just recently joined up to the Project Cars League. And even in that already, he's shown some nice pace, uh, having some good battles in there. So all that's going to do is further improve his racecraft as, as a whole and that can only bring improvement to results over time so Alpha going for consistency there and I, I think that could pay off for them as the season progresses. So moving on then to Racing Point now both of their drivers have gone they've been signed elsewhere now their second place in the constructors championship would have been a huge boost to them their first signing then is graham ttl f1 best finished sixth place uh, with the best championship position of 14th now to me andy this seems like a, a bit of a herring amongst the fish here it, it, it seems like Graham here has, has obviously come in, taken the seat, and it's a huge responsibility to take over from two drivers that got the car to second place in the constructors. He'll be under the cosh, but obviously Racing Point think he's up to the task. They obviously do think that indeed, as you say, sixth place is the best finish, so um, he would really need to make some good improvements to continue on the form they had with Ironics and Navy last season and getting up into podiums and constant points finishes and race victories. It's, it's a bit of a left field one in a way when you consider that they have been second in the constructors last season. Um, that's no slight meant at all on Graham himself. He can be a quick driver on his day as well. Just needs to find a bit more consistency at times. Um, but I think um, whoever has been in de dealing with Racing Point, when the driver market has been around, I think someone was sleeping on the bubble um, on that one there because they were too busy celebrating championships because they've missed out on some other good drivers out there. Um, and you'd like to think that surely they would have been in for the likes of some of the other drivers that were available. Um, trying to keep obviously their championship driver as well, but Graham now needs to uh, take that responsibility of taking on this role, taking over one of the seats that took the Lyronics to the Drivers' Championship last season. We need to try and make the best of it, and so does the teammate as well, whoever that is. Post-edit Kieran here, there was a last minute change and the new driver in the Racing Point car was Jeffrey Henney. So he now joins up with Graham in that Racing Point car. So Racing Point obviously favouring the underdog status. They were the underdogs last season. They helped Lyronic gain his first ever TTL championship. Who knows, maybe we could see Graham or Jeffrey now gunning for that championship. Relatively speaking, it's a bold move from Racing Point. They want to keep that underdog status. They want to keep bringing in new talent. And they've done exactly that with these two signings. So for Racing Point, it's more about getting back, having that stability because they haven't really been in this position before. So they've got to get the stability with both drivers. So I would say Racing Point, watch this space. Uh, their drivers have a lot of pressure on them. So let's see if they can handle it. So to Haas then, 6th place in the Constructors' Championship last season. And so they go for a lineup. Obviously, they've had both their drivers taken away. So they now have to choose two brand new drivers. And the first one leading the line is Old Man Barry. Best finish of 8th place in a TTL F1 race. And he is a returning driver uh, for this season. And, well, I think Barry had a really good results towards the end of last season, especially, I remember, at Cota as well, where he put in a really good performance. And obviously, they've gone for that form, and they're hoping to carry that form from Barry into this brand new season. Definitely so. I mean, Barry only um, joined into the Williams team as of the Japan third last race of the season, finished eighth in that race, finished ninth at Circuit of the Americas as well, had a strong drive, just lost a few places towards the end, had a DNF in the season finale, six points he picked up, his teammate uh, Gypsy George picked up no points throughout the season, so Haas have seen obviously what is possible there with Barry, hoping to see if they could bring that consistency, those two points finishes, can he do that on a consistent basis, can he bring that to them every race, every at least every two, every, every three races, something like that, get them up the championship standings, they've lost a proven race winner in recon, uh, it's now time for Barry and his teammate to take up the mantle to see if they can move forward, who's the teammate though? 
Well, the teammate is, uh, well, they've, Haas have gone for one thing, one man they see potential in and one man with all the experience. Liam Hustrick is in the second Haas car, two-time TTL F1 champion, three-time Constructors champion, one of the most successful drivers in TTL history and add to that a Challenge Cup to boot as well. He's a veteran TTL driver, one of the most successful. It's safe to say he's had a bit of a quiet period, but again, Haas have gone for the same uh, mentality that maybe other teams have. Um, they've, they've gone with the McLaren crazy legs mantra of, you know, class is permanent, temp uh, form is temporary. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, for myself personally, I only ever came across Liam since he joined up uh, last season, partway through the year where he was in the arena. He joined up in the German Grand Prix. Um, obviously came back, two-time former champion in the past. Excuse me. But for me, I don't know what it is about Liam. He seems a bit of an enigma at times to me. Um, I, I, you don't get to championships without being quick. Um, but, and I've seen flashes of that during the races he's been in. But then I've seen, you know, just seems to not even be there sometimes as well in terms of on the track. Out of the races he did, he had a tenth place and a ninth place. It was Germany and Singapore. Did not start in Belgium. He did not finish in Japan. Thirteenth place in Canada. Um, and because of a number of other issues, he did not take part in Abu Dhabi in the final race. So, yeah, he's, he's definitely a, an interesting one. There's definitely experience there. He needs to put his head down and use that experience and try and become Haas's lead driver. Gene Haas and the team have put their eggs in the basket here with Liam Harris. So he needs to repay them now. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Remember that Hustwick did have a time away from racing altogether, so he's getting back into it, and uh, the experienced driver knows what he's doing and can hopefully lead Haas to some good points. Obviously, wanting to improve on sixth place, they weren't too far away from Ferrari in that race, only 12 points behind, so let's see what they can do in the season. Now, last team then is Williams, and it's safe to say, I think eighth place in the uh, table last season ex exceeded all expectations. So they have gone for a lineup here, which includes, well, obviously they had one, drying, uh, one signing taken away from them in Barry. He obviously moved on. But they have retained, as their first driver, George, who is a points scorer and a veteran TTL F1 driver. But as you say, Andy, zero points last season. Obviously, they're not too concerned about that. They've re-signed him. They've repaid some faith in him. And now George has to return the favour by putting in some performances out on track. Yeah, definitely. So, as you say, he is a former points scorer. But last season, nil point on the board. And, in fact, when you look through it, out of the races he took part in, he only finished two races, a 13th place in China and a 16th place at the Circuit of the Americas. Every other race was either, was mainly DNF, so DNF in, what was that, seven rounds of the season, it was basically challenging crazy legs for the most DNFs in the season there. And so, yeah, Williams really putting the faith back into George. He can be quick, we have seen moments from him, like we do for everybody, um, but he needs to knuckle down. There's been too many mistakes from George at times. Maybe he's just struggling a wee bit with a setup, maybe he's struggling with a car, maybe the, the actual game itself, who knows? But he needs to obviously knuckle down, find some speed, try and get himself into those points paying positions, even if it's around 8th, 9th, 10th, he needs to be fighting for those positions on a regular basis and they needs to make sure that the Williams team are repaid for keeping them on for this season. And the final seat in TTL F1 is as follows. We have a brand new driver to TTL F1 entirely and a brand new season for him of season 15. Never raced before, but Leroy joins up in the last Williams seat as a newcomer accompanying George. And of course, George is a veteran driver, so I don't think there's many more people you'd rather start your career with than with a veteran driver who knows how everything goes. Okay, George hasn't had the greatest time, but I think Leroy can really learn a lot from George this season. It's definitely possible to do so. Um, Leroy has proven himself already to myself, uh, having joined the Project Cars League. I had a good wee scrap with him around Monza and an Alpine EB442, I think it was, and then that was quite fun until I dumped it. Um, but, you know, he's in a really good position, a bit of experience there with George, along with his newcomer status. And you know what? If George starts the season like he's finished season 14, and Leroy starts off hitting the ground running, he could quickly become the de facto team leader there in at Williams. 
and that, that could be the best thing for him, coming straight in and knocking out in the park straight away. But of course, you need to keep the head down, you need to stay out of trouble, just like everybody else has to do. It's a very good opportunity for him though, because there's not as much pressure on him in comparison to George Considering's uh, Season 14. Leroy's got a wee bit less expectations on his shoulders, even though he is the rookie coming into the team. So there we have it then, as we just review that driver lineup and lots of familiar faces, only one brand new driver for the season. So let's just quickly run through all those driver lineups once again. For Mercedes, it's the champion, Lyronics, along with second place man, Spike, in Ferrari, Recon and Sean as a signing of intent. Uh, Red Bull have signed Jack and the Gort with McLaren signing Warren and crazily post edit Kieran here. It is Graham and Jeffrey Henney in the racing point. With Alfa Romeo, the only team retaining both of their drivers in Alan Kay and Charlie. In the Renault, it's Navy and Mays. In the Haas, it's Barry and Hustwick. In the Toro Rosso, it's Traw and Leite. And then in the Williams, it is George and Leroy. I tell you what, we've got some great driver lineups in that one. Some great rivalries to establish. And to be honest with you, I think it's brave for Mercedes to sign the top two drivers because they could be in a little rivalry of their own next season. Well, we've seen it before. I mean, we just need to go back to Mercedes himself in real life. Hamilton and Rosberg, 2014, 2015, and especially from 2016 as well. There's been plenty of inter-team rivalries over the year. They can be extremely useful. They can push each other in the right way, and that can really push the team forward and have great results. But on the flip side of it, if you have a, an explosive side of it where you have a Hamilton Rosberg or a, a Weber Vettel after Multi-21, or if you want to go to the, the most famous famous one, or infamous one of all, and Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost obviously when they were at McLaren, they did not like each other by the end, that team became very frictionless, and that is the thing that Mercedes need to avoid, all teams want to avoid it, but when you're signing the first and second place drivers from the previous season, you know their only goal is winning the championship, Lyronix needs to defend having become the hunted, Spike wants to get that championship, I know he's all Whatever may be, may be when he's speaking to us in Commentator's Corner, but he is a racer. He will want to win the championship and he wants that second title. That could be the story of the season. It could well be, and the only place to see it is here on TTTV. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you're notified every time TTTV goes live. TTL F1 is live on Thursdays, and you can join us for all the action. Myself and Andy will try and make as many rounds as we possibly can. Make sure you're following the league on Twitter. It's at TTL underscore F1. You can follow me whilst there if you like. It's at KSMCGF1. And you can also follow Andy there as well. Yep, and that is at Andy81287. A bit of an odd one, Andy, because actually it's not live. We can edit this. And yeah, <laughs> that's about it. But um, I think for the first ever driver lineup, driver announcement video, I think we did a pretty good job. I think we've done all right with it. I mean, we've basically recorded it as live, so in a way it is like a live stream. Um, we've just obviously done it in advance, basically, but I think we've managed it quite well. I'm sure we'll get some critiques in the chat somewhere along the line, but you know what, we'll take them on board and hopefully for next season we can improve on it and find a better solution that will work for everybody. But those are our thoughts on what should be a very exciting season uh, for TTLF1. Make sure to join us on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. Keep an eye on the Twitter page and we'll let you know when round one's going live. Absolutely, and we hope you can join us for the first round of the season, as I said, at TTL underscore F1 to find out when the first round of the season will be. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Let us know if you're happy with your team selection. Make sure you let us know if you're not. We want your reactions. Uh, spread it all over Twitter if you really want to. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been Kieran McGinley. And I've been Andy Campbell. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you next time. Ta-da!